every day of my life, I've lived by trying to be productive a minimum of 64 hours a day, a pro productivity, a value. And I do it seven days a week because I don't believe in work. I believe in activity I get paid for and activity I don't get paid for. I sold uh, legal research online. So there was a legal publisher who had a huge monopoly, West Publishing, and uh, they just were taking their books and putting them online. And it was a slow yes. internet, 93, yeah. <laughs> My mom thought I was a fad. So I, one other lesson, right? Just because your parents love you doesn't mean they give you good advice. You should take their advice, appreciate it, and be grateful for it, but it doesn't mean you have to take it. So just because someone loves you doesn't mean they give you good advice. I ended up uh, selling, which, I made a million dollars nine months out of law school. Um, highly focused on making money. People ask me how I did it, and I think this is one of the most valuable lessons I can give people. Um, I'm a productivity and accessibility person, so I looked at and honestly connected the dots backwards and said, I'm 250,000 at plan, right? That's my comp plan. That's why I took the job, because I wanted to make money. I wasn't gonna be a real lawyer, quote unquote, like my mom said. I had to take the bar, right. but I was gonna sell and I was gonna make 250, and I looked at it and said, hold on a second. If these guys can make 250 working eight hour days, I'm gonna work 16 hours. And if they're gonna be uh, average efficient, I'm gonna be twice as efficient. So my 16 hour days become 32 hour days. And then I'm gonna practice being statistically successful by going on more meetings and closing more deals. So my 16 hours of productivity become 30, I mean, sorry, 32 hours of productivity became 64 hours. I call this the power of 64. Every day of my life, I've lived by trying to be productive a minimum of 64 hours a day, a pro productivity, a value. And I do it seven days a week because I don't believe in work. I believe in activity I get paid for an activity I don't get paid for. I get to do everything that I do. I don't have to do anything. And through this perspective, when nine months into it, I made a million dollars. And at the end of the year, I got all the accolades, awards besides the money. And the way that they reward you, by the way, in sales, what I learned when I was 25 years old by being super good, is they cut your comp plan and cut your territory. <laughs> yeah, Congratulations, right. yeah. So I learned a great lesson there too. But the, I had the last laugh because they gave me all these accolades and I told my boss who I adored, my mentor, Lou Lombardi, I'm like, dude, I scammed you. He goes, what are you talking about? I go, I never even hit my number. He goes, you did a million dollars. Your comp plan's 250. I said, yeah, but I worked 10 years, right? I did, I, seven days a week. 64 hours a day was 10 years and nine months. Um, and so Matt, I beat them with math, and that's what I started realizing for my whole life, that there was a quantitative value in everything I did, and I wasn't gonna adhere to the subjective value that everyone else does, the emotional attachment, people bound emotion for logical reasons. I was gonna live in a quantitative world, real value, and I was gonna do the math at all times to make sure that I could connect the dots backwards in order to effectuate making a lot of money, helping a lot of people, and having a lot of fun. So that level of productivity, I mean, scaling up to that, is it a scale up or is that something where you basically need to wake up and say, okay, because everyone likes to think they're productive, right? Like I, I'll come into the office, and I make my cold calls, and I go in my meetings, and I go, all right, I had a really productive day. But hitting that next level of productivity, how can you, I mean, how do you look back and say that you got there? It's a muscle, right? So practice. Right. I am a big fan of the habit machine. I'm a big fan of literally practicing everything that I do through that attention, intention, and coincidence, right? I pay attention to what I do. And so what does that mean? Understanding the man-made construct of time. I am a student of my calendar. I study my calendar every day with a lens of productivity how valuable and how much I can be of service, and accessibility. How accessible am I to others and how am I accessing what I want? I think it's just as important to receive as it is to give. In fact, you can't give unless you receive. You can't give what you don't have, whether it's money, forgiveness, or love. You better have it in inside and be it yourself. So I think being a student in my calendar, number one, through that lens of productivity and accessibility, and then two, understanding how to be present. I know it's a woo-woo term being present, but for me, it's a mathematical term. What does it mean? It means do it now. Yeah. Like I learned and created a habit that anything in my life, do it now, meaning can I do it now? If so, I do it because it saves at least twice as much time and makes me at least twice as statistically successful, exponentially successful. How many times we don't do something and it never gets done? About 90 some percent of the time. That's true. So I, if I can't do it now, I actually take, create a repository and I go ahead and put everything I can't do now into a list. I prioritize it. Uh, I think Eisenhower or somebody said, you know, Roosevelt, uh, by what's important first. Yeah. 
And then if it's not important, I delegate it. You know, if it's urgent but not important, if it's unimportant and unurgent, I dump it. Yep. I, that's Eisenhower, I think, or Roosevelt, one of the two. Uh, look it up. Uh, but I have this formula, and then in my calendar, student in my calendar, I have a do it now review session, and I schedule you know, everything that's prioritized value-wise in my life. I put my health first because I can't give what I don't have, right? My wife told me, I asked her, I said, I live a blessed life and I am so appreciative of you. What can I do for you, sweetheart? Anything in the world I'll do for you. I can afford anything. And she said, take care of yourself. Okay. I'm like, what? She goes, if you take care of yourself, I know you're gonna take care of everyone else. Same thing with money. Like I switched, this, I'm a total philanthropist, humanitarian, everything comes through me for others. But I'm money driven. I'm a compassionate capitalist. I wrote a book called Compassionate Capitalism because people lose focus. They feel bad about making money. Not if, I don't feel bad about making money because all my money is to help everyone else. Give it back. Exactly. So I'm into making money, helping people, and having fun.